Good morning, everyone. Sounds, sounds like it's okay. Uh, my name is Chris Ostrowski. I work for a company called uh, About. If you're uh, interested in any of our consulting services, please feel free to stop uh, up afterwards. Uh, I've been told that uh, there's a signature thing going on that uh, if you go to a certain number of uh, sessions on a particular track, uh, you can come up and get my signature, and I guess you're eligible for prizes and stuff like that. So please feel free to uh, stop up afterwards, along if there's any questions. Uh, like I said, my name is Chris Ostrowski. I'm going to be uh, talking about the Oracle Web Logic server today. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the things that go along with it. A lot of really exciting things happening in the middleware space these days. So uh, I just wanted to create a presentation, give everyone an overview. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the cloud. There's a lot of talk about fusion applications, fusion middleware. So uh, hopefully this presentation will give you a nice basic overview of what's involved with working with the, the web logic server. Uh, Oracle has had a, a bunch of middleware solutions for a long time. Uh, there was a tool called the Oracle Application Server. Uh, went through a couple of different name changes. If uh, anybody was using those in the 90s and the early 2000s, uh, Oracle seemed to like to change the name of the actual application server with every new release. So it was called a middleware uh, server for a while and an Oracle Application Server. And every new version had a different number. Uh, but a couple of years ago, Oracle purchased a company called BEA, and uh, one of the premier products that BEA offered was, to, was a product called the, the WebLogic server. Uh, Oracle has obviously incorporated that uh, into their product stack, and the Oracle WebLogic server now is uh, the premier server that Oracle uses for all of its new tools. Uh, do we have a lot of Oracle eBusiness Suite people here? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's coming pretty soon, right? Anybody who's familiar with the Oracle eBusiness Suite uh, knows that the next version uh, of the upgrade for uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the eBusiness Suite is going to incorporate Oracle Web Logic as the main part of the application server moving forward. That's going to be a real major upgrade. And that is a transitional type thing for getting everybody ready for Fusion applications. Everybody knows about Fusion applications, right? That's coming down the pipe. Uh, there's not going to be a new version of the eBusiness Suite. You're not going to see an eBusiness Suite 13. Uh, the next version of the eBusiness Suite is going to be Fusion Applications. And Fusion Applications really incorporates a lot of the technologies uh, that Oracle has purchased over the last couple of years, along with uh, the WebLogic server. That's going to be really the main point, uh, the main uh, middleware driver uh, for the next version of the eBusiness Suite. So it's something that uh, everybody should be familiar with. Oh, all of a sudden my clicker's not working. Where's my a second ago? There we go. Uh, if you want to get more information about our company, about.com, I also keep a website uh, that I have a blog on, so if you're interested in uh, reading anything about the blogs, it's all about different Oracle stuff, fourthmonth.wordpress.com. In this presentation, we're going to talk about what is middleware? Why is it important? for organizations moving forward. We're moving more and more away from the traditional client-server type architectures that are out there. Uh, and virtually all of the new uh, products from Oracle uh, going in forward with uh, not just the eBusiness Suite, but certainly with all of the different cloud technologies. There's going to be a lot of announcements about different cloud technologies here at Open World. Uh, they're all really based around these middleware technologies. And middleware is going to give you a lot more flexibility inside of your organization. We're moving, like I said, more and more away from the traditional client-server type architecture. Even Oracle's development tools are really encouraging you to move towards a, a three-tier or an N-tier type environment. Uh, we're going to talk about those different types of architectures here in this presentation. And middleware is going to be a really important piece of that. The Oracle Web Logic Server is going to be Oracle's key middleware piece moving forward. We're also going to take a look at the Oracle Web Logic Server. Uh, we're going to go over a brief introduction over how uh, the components are architected together, the types of things that you have to know, and why, what makes Web Logic such an incredibly powerful uh, middleware solution, not just for Oracle, but for just about any type of development environment that's out there these days. Uh, we're going to talk about the difference between administration and managed servers. Uh, the people who developed uh, the WebLogic tool were smart enough to know that they couldn't put every conceivable thing into the WebLogic server. They couldn't anticipate every different way that it could be used. 
So they left kind of this open architecture so that people can go through and add extensions to it, uh, just like any really good tool. And we're going to look at some of the managed servers that Oracle uh, offers. And a managed server is nothing more than kind of an extension uh, to the, the basic core functionality that comes along with the WebLogic server for specific pieces. And we're going to take a look at the ones that Oracle offers that are out there. And one of the key pieces of a really good middleware architecture strategy is being able to cluster your different uh, WebLogic servers together. This gives you a whole bunch of benefits. We're going to go through all the benefits, but some of the most obvious things are things like scalability, uh, security, high availability for your organization, and the Oracle WebLogic server provides you with all of that functionality. We're also going to talk a look, uh, take a look at, like I mentioned, the managed servers that come from Oracle. Uh, the SOA suite. Everybody familiar with service-oriented architecture? Again, if you're an e-business suite uh, person and you're looking at moving to Fusion applications, you're going to really have to understand SOA principles that are out there because it's really kind of a core philosophy that goes behind uh, the Fusion applications architecture is uh, service-oriented architecture. We'll take a look at uh, some of the things that go along with that. The Oracle Service Bus is a very powerful tool that allows you to manage all of your different web services very easily. Uh, it's not the only thing that the Oracle Service Bus does. There's a, a whole bunch of different functionality. We'll talk about all of those different pieces. But that's one of the additional managed servers that Oracle provides to you as part of the WebLogic server to extend the functionality of what you have out there. Web Center, another really powerful tool that Oracle is, is, is really excited about. They're doing a lot of development, a lot of really exciting things that go on there. Uh, did anybody work with Oracle Portal in the old versions of the uh, Oracle application server? So yeah, we have a lot of Portal users out there. Web Center is like Oracle Portal on steroids. It has all of the functionality that you have where you can create these portal pages real easy. You can let users customize the type of information that they see on a regular basis. Plus it has really sophisticated content management pieces. We'll talk a little bit about more about uh, Web Center when we get to it in the slides. But just know that it's a very uh, robust type of, uh, of uh, product that allows users to get information out of your system really easily. Uh, there's also a lot of talk about uh, a lot of the social features that are built into Web Center. I don't know if uh, everybody follows some of the Oracle seminars that are out there. But uh, I think Oracle has had a, a lot of seminars lately on some of the new social features that are out there where you can integrate real easy with tools like Facebook and Twitter and some of the other ones that are out there. Uh, FRP, uh, uh, sorry, uh, FRPD, uh, that's some of the uh, older legacy tools that Oracle supports. So that's forms, reports, portal, and discovery. So it's a little confusing. Web Center has a, a lot of portal type capabilities that are in it. And that's really where Oracle is putting a lot of its effort and energy. If you see a lot of their white papers, uh, a lot of the new uh, uh, documentation that comes out of Oracle, they're really focused on Web Center. But they still support the portal product. So if you've developed existing portals, you don't have to give those up and, and uh, forcibly go to Web Center. Oracle supports the legacy technologies there. And there's always a whole bunch of people who get excited about, oh, is Oracle not supporting forms and reports anymore? I have all of this. Uh, knowledge built up inside my organization. I've done all of this forms development inside my organization. Oracle is not abandoning forms. They're not abandoning reports. They're not abandoning, uh, abandoning Discover. There's obviously newer technologies that Oracle is really excited about and they're putting a lot of their energies into uh, for Discover. There's 